I will drop a link in the chat. You can follow along here watching or you can save those slides for yourself. So tonight, first we'll discuss who is on the call. We'll get to know Lumi Wealth, myself, and some of you in the chat. Then we're going to cover four topics about blockchain programming. Why learn the blockchain? What is a blockchain? What are smart contracts? And we'll take a look at how to build a simple contract. And finally, cryptocurrencies and NFTs. So tonight we'll give you a teaser of our blockchain programming course. I hope everyone can hear and see me well. Please let me know in the chat if you can hear and see my screen. I will also drop a link to the course that we're talking about at lumiwealth.com. The course is blockchain programming. And tonight we're going to talk about some of the topics from that course. First, let's get to know some of you in the chat. So if you're brave enough, please let us know what is your job? Do you know how to code? And how much blockchain experience do you have? Maybe none, maybe you're a beginner, or perhaps you have more experience. So let us know, that way we can tailor the webinar for you. I'll start with myself. My name is Alexandra Kropova. I'm an instructor here at LumiWealth. And I have taught thousands of students just like you how to build dApps and how to code through online courses. So if anyone would like to leave a chat, please feel free. I also want to introduce LumiWealth. We are an online school, primarily focused on financial courses, but also now expanding into the blockchain space as well. We have courses like trading as a business, crypto trading with algorithms, Web3 using React, which is a complementary course to blockchain programming, algorithmic trading, machine learning, options trading, and of course, the theme of tonight, blockchain programming. So maybe some of you are coming from our other courses, and I'm happy to have you here tonight. Okay, we have a message in our chat from Brian, a lawyer with no experience in programming or blockchain. All right, thank you for the message. Most of my students are complete beginners. So good to know, sounds like we have beginners tonight in our webinar. So make sure to keep that in mind. We also have a YouTube channel. You can search up Looney Wealth on YouTube where we post webinars just like this one. And we also post additional material. So please find us on YouTube and subscribe. You can watch back webinars and see other tips and reviews of courses. We also have a message from Robert. I'm a beginner. I do web design. So some HTML and CSS with very little Java. Okay. Sounds like some coding experience there. That's great. If you do have coding experience, help you out, help you out, help you out with blockchain programming, but it's not required for the course. So even if you're a beginner, you can still follow along, but of course it will take more effort to learn the coding. So if you do have coding experience, that will help you. And if you have web experience, that would give you a leg up in our web three course, all about building websites that connect to the blockchain. And of course we're on circle right here at lumiwealth.circle.so, our online community. Please feel free to post in the chat boards at any time on circle. And we're on Discord too, although we're moving to Circle, but we do still have a Discord if you'd like to find us there. And feel free to ask any questions throughout the night. We'd be happy to answer throughout the hour and afterwards we'll stick around too. So let's jump into our first topic of the night. Why should we learn about the blockchain in the first place? Well, it's an exciting new field blockchain and decentralized technology. You can build a lot of cool and cutting edge projects and even build your own startup if you want to, because there's a lot of opportunity as it's a relatively new technology compared to other software. And we've seen blockchain entering the world in different ways. For example, 
Many of you are likely familiar with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and NFTs. We'll talk more about those later on tonight. But beyond the popular ways like cryptocurrency and NFTs, technologies like the blockchain, and by that I mean decentralized technologies, they're entering different industries like games in terms of video games, web applications, which means websites, and even the face of the internet itself, we have this new phase called Web 3.0, which is influenced by the blockchain. And we've seen financial companies and others implementing decentralized technology. So we have a lot of different areas in the world of how the blockchain is affecting these industries. And we'll take a look at some examples later tonight. Even at the base form, just how we do transactions, the blockchain is affecting that. Back when Bitcoin was first released in 2008, you couldn't go around making many transactions with Bitcoin. But nowadays, even large companies are allowing their products to be purchased with cryptocurrencies. So we see a lot more acceptance of this kind of technology. It's called the future of the internet because of the way that you can connect blockchain technology with websites that live on the internet. So it's a big opportunity learning blockchain. There's a lot of projects that you can build and new companies rising up and even opportunities for just building your own projects from something as simple as building your own NFT to something complex like a decentralized application or a decentralized autonomous organization. You, know, you have lots of opportunity for what you can create. And if you want to enter the field or transition into a new career as a blockchain programmer, there's a high demand for those because it's a new technology. So there are fewer programmers out there that know how to code for the blockchain. And by learning about decentralized technology, you can make better investments. Maybe you've already invested in some cryptocurrency, some NFTs. Well, by learning the behind the scenes of how the whole network actually works, it will help you make wiser investments in the future. So those are just a few reasons of why we are creating this blockchain programming course in the first place, running for almost a year now. So now that we know why we should learn about this technology, and hopefully we're excited about some of the projects and the industries we can enter. Let's talk about what is a blockchain anyway. Specifically, we'll talk about what are Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are the two most popular networks at the time. A blockchain is essentially a piece of software, which means it's written in code. And we have many different out there, out there, out there, like the Bitcoin network, the Ethereum network, and each of them have their own different strands as well, or branches. But essentially, you can visualize the blockchain as a chain of blocks. And all these blocks are connected, and the blocks contain data. Data meaning information about what has been happening, what is happening, second by second, on each blockchain. The two most popular ones, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, when we say a chain of blocks, it's not literally a chain of blocks that are being stored somewhere. This is just a metaphor for the data structure, which means it's a way that you can visualize the code. But at the end of the day, a blockchain is still written with code. The number one property about a network like Bitcoin or Ethereum is that you can establish trust between parties without an intermediary. There are many benefits of a blockchain, but that is the number one most crucial property about a blockchain. So let's explain what this means, this establishment of trust. If I were to perform a typical transaction, like buying a house, Typically, I would have to establish trust between myself as the buyer and then the seller of the house. So I would usually involve a bank, 
maybe some lawyers. You'd have to establish trust for the transaction to happen. Otherwise, it might be a fraudulent transaction. So typically, you would have to have intermediaries to establish the trust. And even something as simple as buying a product online, usually you would establish trust through paying with your credit card because then your credit card has some insurance and also the seller is going to guarantee that they can actually get the funds through your credit card. But there's fees involved, of course, with involving intermediaries like credit card fees or fees for your lawyer and for the bank. So these would be traditional ways of making transactions or even in general establishing trust. Maybe if you're hiring a contractor, same thing, you'd have to establish trust. Perhaps you two would sign a contract and then if someone violates the contract, they can get sued. So those are just some examples of traditional ways of doing transactions. But if you do a transaction over a network like Ethereum, you can do the transaction directly without requiring intermediaries. The intermediary is actually going to be Ethereum itself. It's the piece of software over which you're doing the transaction. So you would send the funds over Ethereum and then you would receive the goods over Ethereum as well. So Ethereum is the intermediary and you don't have to involve any others if you don't want to because you, the whole trust is put into the network itself. You may be wondering, how does a network establish trust? You know, I can send the crypto, but how do I actually know that I'm going to get the product back? Why would I trust the network? Well, the reason you can trust the network is because of smart contracts that live on the network. And we'll take a look at contracts more in depth in the next slide. But as an overview, everything that you want to do on a network like Ethereum, everything is done through contracts. And it's similar to the concept of signing a contract when you get a new job or hiring a contractor and signing a contract with them or purchasing a house and signing a contract with the seller. Same concept here. You're writing a contract, but the contracts are all written in code. And so the focus of our course is to teach you how to build these contracts because these contracts will state exactly what will happen in every transaction. And the transaction can be simple, just buying a product, or they can be complex, like creating new products or starting a chain of actions to happen. And so that's how you establish trust over the network because you can read the contract of your transaction. If I want to buy a house over Ethereum instead of over the traditional way with intermediaries and involving the bank and lawyers, if I want to buy something like a house over Ethereum, then I can read the contract that the seller has put up. And if I'm satisfied with their contract, then I send my money, my crypto, I send my funds to the contract. And then the contract will execute everything automatically on its own. That's why it's called automated because it immediately performs what it said it would. And then I will receive the product or whatever happens in the contract will happen. So if it's a transaction, then the funds will go to the seller and the product will go to the buyer. And so you can establish trust over the network because you cannot change these contracts after they've been put up. And the contract will clearly state everything that will happen. Nothing in the contract can be hidden. So that is how you can establish trust over a network. Now, the technical definition for a blockchain is a timestamped series of immutable transactions. Timestamped means that every time someone interacts with the blockchain, when they make a change to it, like they send some cryptocurrency or they create an NFT or they deploy, create a new contract, all of that is being stored and it will be given a date and a time. And that data about whatever is happening is going to get stored in blocks. And so remember, the blockchain is just a chain of blocks. And as more information needs to get added, more blocks are added to the end of the chain. So it's this chain that's ever increasing. And of course, the chain is just a data structure. Everything is being stored in code. 
but the visual is this chain. And this chain cannot be broken. So once I do something on Ethereum, I cannot take it back. Now, I could do something else afterward. Maybe I can request a refund if I want to undo something, but you cannot technically undo an action. This also helps establish trust because if someone says that they sent you crypto, you can go and check if they actually did by checking the network. Because if it's not on the network, then they never did it. And you can trust that Ethereum is keeping track of everything that ever happened. It's a timestamped series, which means it's a list. So a chain, kind of like a linked list, if any of you do have coding experience. The transactions are immutable, which means they cannot be changed. So once you write a contract and you put it onto Ethereum, you cannot take it off or edit it afterwards. So everything is immutable. This also helps establish trust because you know that what you read is what is going to happen. And these are a series of transactions. A transaction doesn't have to be a purchase. It could be creating a new contract or minting an NFT or sending someone a product or starting a series of actions like starting a shipment, or it could be creating a new store that you are going to run on the network. But it, they're called transactions because you have to pay gas fees whenever you change something on the network. But they're not necessarily purchases. They could be any kind of action. So that is an overview of a blockchain in general. Blockchains began in 2008 with Bitcoin, the first blockchain that was created. This also invented cryptocurrencies. So back in 2008, we got the invention of the blockchain and the invention of cryptocurrencies. Since then, we have many more networks that have been created. For example, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, there are tons of blockchains out there. These are the two most popular, Bitcoin because it was the first one created. And number two is Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is popular because it expanded the power or ability of the Bitcoin blockchain. With Ethereum, you could actually create complex contracts. So those contracts that I was just talking about, they actually became available with Ethereum. Bitcoin had a simple version called Bitcoin Scripts, but when the Ethereum blockchain was created, it allowed for these powerful smart contracts. Because when Bitcoin was created, it was mostly just for transferring or using cryptocurrencies. But when we got the invention of Ethereum, we could now build much more complex contracts on the blockchain. Things like NFTs or representing an online school or an online store, or a lending system, like taking out loans, financial instruments, all of these can be built as contracts and put onto Ethereum. So Ethereum is much more powerful than Bitcoin in that sense. In our course, which begins in September, blockchain programming, our next semester, we're going to focus on Ethereum because it is the most popular one for building smart contracts. On Bitcoin, you cannot build such complex contracts. You can only build very simple ones. So that's why our focus will be Ethereum. But if you learn how to work with one blockchain like Ethereum, it's very easy to pick up another one because at the end of the day, they are all the same basic concept of a blockchain. They have the same base structure, but then it's, how each blockchain has its own special features that makes them different. And they might use different programming languages as well. So Ethereum created back in 2015, it was the first to allow smart contracts. So that will be our next topic of the night, these smart contracts. So we've already introduced that everything that you want to put on Ethereum, it lives as a smart contract. If you want to create your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum, you would create a contract for that cryptocurrency token. If you want to create an NFT on Ethereum, 
you would write it as a smart contract. If you want to create a new bank on Ethereum, you would have to write all of the bank's systems and all of its actions, like storing bank accounts, allowing deposits and withdrawals, allowing mortgages or loans. You would have to write all of that into a contract. So any kind of automated process that you want to put up, you can put into a contract and then send the contract to Ethereum. So in our fall course, we're going to be learning how we can build different types of contracts because there are many types that you can build. Any kind of company or system that you want to create, you can put onto Ethereum and then it will run and live on Ethereum and it will run on its own. It'll be automated. So you don't have to control it afterward. You can if you want to, but you don't have to work with it at all. It will live on its own. Some examples of smart contracts. We've already discussed a cryptocurrency token, an NFT, a crowdfunding campaign, a lottery, a loan system, a bank, or even something that's not a financial instrument you can represent as a contract. It's similar to a class if, if, if you are familiar with programming. And Solidity is the programming language that's used to write these contracts. So just like I would write a book in English, I would write a smart contract in Solidity. So in our course, we will learn how to code from scratch in Solidity. Solidity looks similar to JavaScript, but it is its own programming language with, with its own unique features. So if you have programming experience, that will help you build projects faster and build more complex projects quickly. But if you don't have programming experience, that's totally fine. We will learn Solidity from scratch in the course. Because with Ethereum, you cannot write the contracts in English. You have to write them in code. And it's easy to get started. You can try building out a contract at this website, remix.ethereum.org. This is the official online editor for Solidity. So you can try out writing some contracts on Remix. For example, here I have a sample contract. It's a very simple one for this quick demo. So I'm going to just paste it into the chat. We will learn how to build more complex contracts in our course, but we will start at the base level. So if you go to remix.ethereum.org, you can actually try out building out your first smart contract. So this is Remix. You would open up this top left-hand tab, which is your file explorer, and you would create a new file. Okay, that's workspace. You would create a new file down here by clicking the file icon. And then you would type in the name of your file, which is typically the name of your contract, like Lumi NFT. The type of file is a .sol, which stands for Solidity. Then you would hit enter to create the file. So I already have it created here. This is a Solidity file. Similar to a text file, which is written with just rich text. If you have a file with the extension .sol, it means that the file is a Solidity file and it can be read as a Solidity file. And then here we see some Solidity code. So don't worry if you don't understand all of this code because we will learn how to code from scratch in the course. But we can do an overview of this code for this demo. At the top of this file, you have a comment with these two forward slashes. And this is required at the top of every Solidity file to specify the license of the contract. So is this copyright free or do you want to copyright the contract? And if you want to follow along, you can just type out all this code or copy and paste it on Remix. So that first line is a line of code. It's a comment because of these two forward slashes. And it's highlighted in green on Remix because it is a comment. So that first line is required to tell you, to tell others how you want to copyright the file. The next line is also required 
and you have to put in what version of the Solidity programming language does this file use. So we use this line with some keywords to specify the version. So in this case, the file can be read with any version equal to or greater than 0.7.0 .0 and less than 0.9.0. So that means that the compiler, which is what reads your file, it can be in this range. So this is also required because there are different versions of the Solidity programming language. It's a language that is often updated. So it's a developing language still being worked on and every or most languages out there are constantly being updated and improved upon. So you have to specify what language your file uses, because maybe if you build your file in 2022, it's going to use the latest version 0.8. But then in a three years, the latest version might be 1.1. And then your previous file would not be able to be read by a compiler that uses the latest version. So that's why you have to specify what version your file uses. Next, we have a line, another line of code. This line imports a file from a library. So here we're using a very popular library called Open Zeppelin. This is a library, which means in programming terms, it is a set of code that you can use for your project. And a library can have templates that you can use for your code. So templates for contracts, or it can have helper tasks like functions that you can use to run tasks. And so you don't have to create all of the code by yourself from scratch. Open Zeppelin is a popular library because it has templates for smart contracts. The most popular ones that it has are ERC-20 for cryptocurrency tokens and ERC-721 for NFT tokens. And we'll talk more about those two shortly. But this ERC-721, this is a popular template for building an NFT contract. And the reason we use a template is to make sure that our NFT doesn't have security vulnerabilities and to make sure that it will work on different marketplaces online. So using a template is highly recommended for your contracts, if you can, if it's not a completely unique contract. Like if you're getting hired by a company to build a contract, then you might build it from scratch if it's a completely unique concept. Otherwise, you would start with a template. So this line imports the template so that we can use it. Next, on line 7, we actually build the header for the contract. So we use this keyword contract to tell the Solidity compiler, which is what reads your code, to tell it that we want to create a new contract. And all these keywords are highlighted in blue. And then we give a new name to our contract. You could call this any name. But typically you want to represent what your contract is. Like, is it a bank? Is it an online school? Is it an NFT? So that's how you can create a new contract and then you can specify if you want to use a template. And then you can put whatever features or tasks or functions that the contract can perform. You put them in the curly brackets of the contract. And here we then have another line, a constructor, taking in some arguments. So these are all coding terms that we will learn in depth in our course. But at the base level, you can know that these couple lines, 9 and 10, they are used to create a new instance of the contract. So to create an actual object from the contract and then to put it on Ethereum. So this code, it just tells you how to build that contract object. And then lines 9 and 10 these lines are responsible for actually creating the object and putting it on Ethereum. So this is a simple NFT contract. They can get a lot more complex than this. But then if you want to test out the contract, 
you can use Remix to do a simulator where you put it onto Ethereum. So you can compile the contract, which means that it will be checked to make sure you didn't have any mistakes. And then after the compiler, you can deploy the contract in the deployment tab. Deploying means taking a contract that was written with code and then creating an object from it and putting that object onto Ethereum. So first we would select the contract that we want to deploy. In this case, it would be Lumi NFT. We would fill in any requirements for deployment. Like in this case, we need a name and a symbol. So we can put in a name here, such as Lumi NFT, and then a symbol for the NFT. Then press transact to deploy it. And we can see it down here under deployed contracts. And we can see all of the properties and functions that the NFT contract has. For example, it can do transfers of the token. You can get the balance of someone to see how much of that token do they own or which ones do they own. You can get your name of your NFT. You can get the owner of tokens. So who owns which tokens? You can get your symbol and you can get the token URI for each token, which is the metadata, such as the image for each NFT. So just like that, we're able to create a smart contract and put it onto Ethereum. And then here we can see all of the details about the contract. All of these details, they come from the template. And of course, if you want to add more, you can put in as many features of your token as you want. All you have to do is put it in code in the contract. So that was an overview of how to build out a smart contract. And we cover this step by step in great detail in the course. So don't worry if you don't understand everything because we will cover everything in the course and you'll be able to understand every single line and you'll be able to build your own contracts just like this with as many features and functions as you want. So if you want to build your own NFT, you'll be able to do so. If you want to apply for a job and they give you a task of building a contract as a test, you can complete the test to fulfill their contract requirements. If you're already working at a company and they're transitioning to use smart contracts or they want to add a smart contract to their business logic, then you can take their requirements Tracked, tracked, and translated from English into actual code. So this was a quick example of how you can build your own contract. And we're going to build many contracts like this in the course. So feel free to copy and paste this code to Remix and try it out yourself. All you have to do is go to remix.ethereum.org and you can try running some solidity online. So in our course, we're going to practice on Remix and we're also going to learn how to go offline to manage complex projects. But we start off simple and each week we will increase the complexity of our contracts and we'll build upon the knowledge of the previous week. So we have talked about why learn the blockchain, what are Bitcoin and Ethereum, and we've talked about smart contracts. Our final topic, are cryptocurrencies and NFTs. So we've already briefly discussed these two. These are two very popular methods of how decentralized technology is being used today. When we say decentralized technology, we mean a piece of technology without a central entity. So the most popular format is blockchain. It's decentralized because there's no CEO and there's no central database or warehouse. There's no office where it's being managed. A decentralized technology like blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network, which means that it's being run by computers all around the world. And if you wanted to, you could even connect your computer to become one of the peers that keeps Ethereum running. And then you will get small rewards for using your computer's power to keep the network running. So that's why 
the technology is called decentralized because it doesn't have any central owner. When we talk about a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, we're talking about the same thing. An, or an organization, so a company, but it's autonomous, which means it runs through smart contracts and it is decentralized. There's no CEO. Instead, all of the business proposals, business ideas, and business choices are being proposed by and voted on by the community. Therefore, it's called a DAO because it uses decentralized technology through automated smart contracts. Next up, cryptocurrencies and NFTs. Likely some of you have heard about these two. They're very popular these days. We'll start with cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies began back in 2008 when the Bitcoin blockchain was created. It also invented cryptocurrencies. So it's a digital currency, kind of like the digital dollar, but there's a key difference between a digital dollar that you're using your credit card to spend versus a cryptocurrency. And that is because a cryptocurrency is tied to a blockchain and therefore it's secured by cryptography. So the Bitcoin cryptocurrency is tied to the Bitcoin blockchain. The Ethereum cryptocurrency is tied to the Ethereum blockchain. So what does it mean to be tied to a blockchain? Well, if a cryptocurrency is tied to a network, it means that it runs on the network. It's also used to pay gas fees on the network if it's a native cryptocurrency. Gas fees are required whenever you're performing a transaction that changes something on the network. You have to pay a small amount of gas fees, and these are used to reward the peers or the miners that are keeping the network running. So you have to pay gas fees in the native cryptocurrency. Like on the Bitcoin blockchain, you have to pay gas fees on with Bitcoin. On the Ethereum blockchain, you have to pay gas fees with Ethereum. So that's what we say, that's what we mean when we say that a cryptocurrency is tied to a blockchain. Now, if a crypto is tied to a blockchain, it also means that it's going to be tracked by the blockchain. So this makes it very hard to counterfeit because the location of every cryptocurrency, it will be tracked as it is spent and as it is transferred around. So if I spend one Ethereum token, or maybe a fraction of it, to buy a product, to buy an NFT. If I try to double spend, which means spend the same cryptocurrency again, well, the network will actually prevent me from doing so because before a transaction goes through, it's checked for validity. And if a transaction is invalid, like if I don't have enough crypto to buy the product, the transaction will fail. Or if I'm trying to counterfeit the crypto, the transaction will fail. That's because it's built into the actual code itself behind Ethereum. Every time you want to do something on Ethereum, it doesn't just happen immediately. It first goes through some checks. And this is part of the cryptography aspect of the blockchain and part of why financial companies are interested in it. Because it reduces the amount of fraudulent transactions and counterfeit transactions and hacks as well. Although hacks do happen on blockchains, but it is much at a much smaller level, much smaller rate than with a traditional piece of software. And the reason being because of how the code is actually structured, how the cryptocurrencies are tracked as they're spent. They're not tracked in the same way, in the same cryptographic way, if it's just a digital dollar. Therefore, a digital dollar, like the US dollar that I card, credit card, credit card, it's much easier to hack or to counterfeit because it doesn't have that decentralized cryptography in it or that validation. So actually when Bitcoin was invented, it was also the first time that the double spending problem was solved in computer science. So the double spending problem, it relates to counterfeiting. For example, if I want to send you 
an image, I can just text you a copy of the image. But you cannot do the same thing with money. You cannot send a copy of money because that would be double spending or counterfeiting it because you would just have made a second version of the dollar. So this was the double spending problem, which was solved with the invention of the Bitcoin blockchain. Therefore, it's much easier to double spend a dollar than it is a cryptocurrency. So that's why cryptocurrencies are of such interest. You can also perform transactions directly instead of having to go through a credit card or a bank or borders. You can just send the money directly. So lots of different reasons why there's popularity for cryptocurrencies. There's a slight distinction between cryptocurrency versus a cryptocurrency token. So if you want to build your own cryptocurrency, technically you would have to build your own blockchain too, because technically a cryptocurrency means a native cryptocurrency that is tied to a blockchain, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. But if you want to build your own cryptocurrency token, it functions in the same way, in the sense that it's still a cryptocurrency being secured by cryptography, but you can build it on top of an existing blockchain, so it's much easier and faster to build. So just two differentiations between cryptocurrency versus cryptocurrency token. You can create your own blockchain and create your own native cryptocurrency, which means that if I create LumiCoin, it's tied to the Lumi blockchain, and all the gas fees are paid in LumiCoin. I could do that. It would just take more work because you have to set up your own blockchain versus creating LumiCoin as a cryptocurrency token. This is a token, which means it can be a smart contract that lives on top of Ethereum. So I don't have to recreate my own network. I can just use Ethereum and then put my cryptocurrency on top. But my cryptocurrency is not going to be used to pay any gas fees, it's just a contract that lives on the blockchain. So in our course, we'll learn how to build many types of contracts, including a cryptocurrency token. So it'll be a cryptocurrency as a contract that lives on Ethereum. All right, next up, we also have NFTs. Does anyone have questions about cryptocurrencies before we move on to NFTs? I'd be happy to answer. After cryptocurrencies, we'll discuss NFTs. So we already built out an NFT contract. This is a very simple NFT contract. It doesn't do very much. It just has a name and a symbol, but you can get much more complex. You can add file data like images and even functionality, behavior, and mutations to your NFTs. But we looked at a simple example of NFTs. So we'll dive more into them unless anyone wants to ask about cryptocurrencies. And again, feel free to ask at any time and we'll save time at the end as well. So an NFT stands for non-fungible token. Whereas a cryptocurrency is technically a fungible token. So with a cryptocurrency, it's called fungible because it can be divisible. So you can divide it into smaller parts, like a dollar you can divide into cents. But a non-fungible token, you cannot divide, it's non-divisible. And it's typically used to represent a unique asset where every token is unique from others. Whereas with a dollar or a cryptocurrency, like Ethereum, I can exchange you one Ether for one Ether and we wouldn't have lost any value except in the gas fees. But with an NFT, if I trade you one NFT for yours, then technically we'll have changed different assets. Because the whole point of a cryptocurrency is how much do you own? How much Bitcoin do you have? But the whole idea behind NFTs is which one do you own? Do you own 
Lumi NFT number 100, or do you own Lumi NFT number one? And so whichever one you own, it might have different value or different ability, different data behind it, because each token is meant to be a unique asset. So an NFT can be something simple, like just an image with a name and a symbol. And your contract would set up the collection and you could create different instances from the contract. Or an NFT can get more complex. For example, it could represent a real world item or a virtual item. NFTs can be used to represent ownership in other pieces of software. For example, in the metaverse, you could use, or they are using NFTs to represent land ownership in the metaverse. So if you have a hundred plots of land in a digital world, then each plot, each one by one plot of those hundred is being stored the ownership through NFT. So if you have NFT number one, then you get that plot number one, which is maybe at the top left hand corner. If you have NFT number two, you get the plot right next to it. So you, you can use NFTs to represent ownership of assets like virtual land or collectible items. You can also connect any contract, including NFTs, to other pieces of software like a website. You can connect a contract to a website. You can connect an NFT to a video game where if you own the NFT, then you can get access to a special item in the game, or if you reach level 100, then you get minted or created a new NFT. So commonly you see contracts being connected with other pieces of software that are not the blockchain, like an NFT combined with a game or a website connected with a smart contract. So you might have an online store that is a website, and then you can create a complimentary online store that is a contract and you can log and even perform transactions over that contract. This will allow for cryptocurrency payments and for automated transactions and for being able to track the history of your store on the blockchain. So you have more secure tracking of your data so that you can prevent data loss. So we commonly see these use cases where we have a traditional piece of software like a website and we combine it with the blockchain. We combine it with smart contracts. The reason being to take advantage of smart contracts because they allow cryptocurrencies, automation, transparency, user trust without intermediaries, tracking data to prevent data loss and reducing the amount of hacks and counterfeit transactions. So we commonly see contracts, including NFTs, combined with other pieces of software that are non-blockchain. So those are cryptocurrencies and NFTs. And in our fall course, Blockchain Programming, we do learn how to build NFTs as well. We build a few projects with NFTs. As, long, as well as other projects too. So those are the four topics of tonight. Next, we'll dive into the entire curriculum. We'll talk about what you will learn. So tonight was meant as an introduction to these topics and we get a lot more in depth in our course. The course is project focused. So mostly we spend our time building projects. Now let's go to the actual course page. So here is a link in the chat to the course page, lumiwealth.com. And let's check it out. So here you can read all about the course. You can also see the different plans. So we have three different plan options, the self-directed plan, the live classes plan, and the project help slash tutoring plan. So the self-directed plan means that you're going through the course on your own time. You get access to our whole video library. We've done almost a year of courses for blockchain programming. And so you can watch back. You can also watch every new video we create. 
You get access to the community and to instructor support, as well as weekly discussion hour. And we also have payment plans available if you don't want to pay all at once. And we can provide invoices if you have professional development reimbursement. Our second plan option is live classes. So this is where you get everything from the self-directed plan. And you also get eight weeks of live classes. We meet every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern. And we go through every week of the eight weeks of the course. You also get six hours of dedicated live Q&A, access to all future videos and code. So you're a member for life, you can get access to all of the future and past semesters too. And you also get all of the code for the many projects that we build. With this plan, you also get help with personal projects. You can get to know classmates. We help with preparing your resume and getting ready for the coding interview if you are interested in getting a new job. And you have unlimited email and chat Q&A. Even after the course is finished, you can still reach out to us anytime. And one more plan option we have is the project help or tutoring plan. So you get everything from the previous plans. You also get help with building a custom project, including software development if needed. And you get 10 hours of one-on-one -on -one video or phone sessions or software development time with our experts. So this is a great option for you if you have a project in mind or you want to build your portfolio or start a new side hustle, or if you just want more one-on-one -on -one tutoring. It's another option for you is this third plan. So if you want more one-on-one -on -one explanations and time, then this is the plan for you. So with any of these plans, you can select the live classes date or just add to cart. So select the options that we have. So our next upcoming live classes begin in September. The course length is eight weeks, excluding any holiday breaks. And the effort is about eight to 12 hours per week, but it depends on your goals for the course. If you want to, you can just watch along every week for the two hours. But if you are interested in maybe getting a new job, then you have to put in more effort to do the homework and try out the projects, which will be provided every single week, but they're optional. So you can select any plan that you like, and this will take you to the cart. And here on the cart, you can choose to add more courses. If you add another one, then you'll get a 10% off discount. So if I add another course to the cart, I can pick it here or I can go back and go to any course page and add it there and I'll automatically get 10% off. And then I can proceed to the checkout. And here I can choose if I want to use a payment plan. So if you want to pay with a payment plan, you can select that here or you can pay in full. All right. So that is how you can enroll in the course. and you'll be able to access the video library and the code library through your account at loomywealth.com. And of course, we'll meet every two hours per week as well if you are in the live classes plan or the project help or tutoring plan. So those are the three options. You can also book a call with us at any time if you want to discuss options in detail or ask a question tonight too, that would be totally fine. Next, we can talk about the entire course curriculum. So in week eight, we will introduce the blockchain space, similar to how we did tonight, but we'll cover more in depth. In week two, we'll start coding in Solidity. So we're going to learn the fundamentals of coding. So the tools you learn in this course will be applicable to many coding languages. But they are Solidity specific, but all of these topics like variables, arrays, math, they're useful in many programming languages. In fact, almost all of them. So you learn key programming topics, but in Solidity. So focused on smart contracts, 
but we'll learn how to code from scratch. In week three, we'll learn how to build some sample smart contracts. Then we'll dive into week four and week five. We talk about more higher level programming topics and more complex contracts each week. In part three, we learn how to build a cryptocurrency token and an NFT token. And then we learn how to manage more complex projects. So how can we manage projects offline? And how can we deploy tokens to a public network and then check them on a marketplace like the OpenSea NFT marketplace? So by the end, you'll be able to manage complex smart contracts. So those are the eight weeks of our course. Currently we are, well, we just finished the summer semester. So the next live semester begins on September 8th. You can start watching back the video library anytime. This is just when the live classes begin. And we will also have another session in the winter time. Registration closes September 1st. So I encourage you to join in while spots last. And I hope to see all of you this fall in blockchain programming. If anyone has questions about the course or blockchain, cryptocurrencies, please feel free to ask now. I'd be happy to answer. Frank says, I'll be in touch since I'm interested in the whole library. Awesome. Glad to hear that, Frank. And I hope you enjoy the library. Thank you, Christopher, for joining us today. We will have another webinar next week all about DAP development. So stay tuned on the Circle. We'll post it soon. This is a complimentary course to blockchain programming. We're going to talk more about decentralized technology, specifically decentralized apps. So if you're interested in learning more about the blockchain space, but more about the website side or to the traditional software and how it can incorporate the blockchain, then I encourage you to join me in this webinar. Blockchain programming is focused solely on the blockchain. Web3 is focused on the incorporation between a traditional piece of software like a website or an app or just a company's internal application and how you can combine the two, how you can have that communication and the interaction between something like a website and a smart contract. So many companies are starting to integrate smart contracts and we'll learn how we can be part of that process. Yes, Brian, this is another course. So I will share a link to 3 ab 3 ab 3 using a React course. So another webinar promoting another course. Hope to see you next Monday. We'll talk all about Web3. So we also have this course running in the fall. Here you can see 10 weeks learning about web development and how to build decentralized apps like an NFT minting dApp. So Web3 is where you would build a website and then you would connect the website to Ethereum. So that whole process. Whereas blockchain programming is all about the contracts on Ethereum, how to build those. Less about the connection with other software. But because we do see a lot of this combination of traditional software with Ethereum, that's why we have this second course. So I hope to see you all next Monday same time and same place. We'll talk all about this complimentary course. So this will also be running in September. So if you're interested more in the blockchain side, then sign up for blockchain programming. If you have more experience or if you're interested in learning about the DAP side, Web3, then sign up for Web3 using React. I would encourage you to start off with blockchain programming. It's more simple, but of course it's up to you. All right, if anyone has further questions, please feel free to ask. 
I'd be happy to talk about blockchain programming or Web3 using React. I'll drop a link to the slides again so that all of you can save and read back and try out the code. We will post this webinar on YouTube so you can watch back anytime. And thank you all for joining me tonight. Again, if you have further questions later this week, feel free to email us. You can message us on circle, loomywealth.circle.so. You can make a public post or just send a direct message to ask us any questions. And you can also book a call with us anytime. If you want to talk more over the phone, you can feel free to ask any questions over the phone. Maybe you have more complex questions or you need answers right away, then feel free to book a call. Otherwise, we've covered all the topics we need to for tonight. So thank you all for joining me for this introduction to blockchain programming. I hope you're as excited about this upcoming course as I am. We cover a lot of fun topics and we build many projects together. So your portfolio will be large after the course is done. I'll leave it here then tonight. Thank you for messaging Chad and hope to see you in the fall. Working on coming up with the funds. Hopefully we will see you there. Please do message us and inquire us about any ways we can help. All right. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Looks like the questions and messages are winding down. So we can leave it here tonight and I'll see you next Monday or I'll see you in the course.